Graphing polynomials uh, without calculus, part two. So we have an example here of a quartic and uh, negative x, 5x to the fourth minus 30x cubed minus 45x squared. And we find the y-intercept, of course, by setting x to zero. And when we do that, we find that we get zero for y. So we have a y-intercept that goes through the or that's in the origin, actually, which is also an x-intercept. And the next thing we want to do is we want to find uh, x-intercepts. So we set y to 0. Now, um, this is a quartic, which is not easy to solve, but it turns out this one factors. And I fact factor out the uh, negative 5x squared, and I have a quadratic here. And this also factors into x plus 3 times x plus 3. So I end up with negative 5x squared times x plus 3 squared. And I set uh, each factor to 0, negative 5x squared equals 0, and x plus 3 squared equals 0. And of course, 0 will make this 0, right? And if I put a negative 3 in here, it'll make it 0. So uh, those are the two x-intercepts, uh, two places where the graph hits the x-axis. And I mentioned they're double roots. That's because these uh, come from squared factors, which also makes them bouncers. They'll hit the x-axis uh, and they'll bounce because they can't change signs when they uh, go to zero. So uh, we don't have any symmetry with this guy, do we? We don't seem to have any odd or even symmetry. If you check that, you won't find any anything there. And then uh, the next thing we want to do is the lead term test. And we say that um, the highest power dominates. And this thing, negative 5x to the fourth, is the highest power. So as x gets really, really big in the positive or negative direction, this function is going to behave like negative 5x to the fourth. And we know that uh, power functions like this uh, to an even power all look like, sort of like, or behave in any way, like x squared. And so um, it's it's going to be a negative x squared, of course, a negative in front. So that means it's going to go down this way and go down this way. x squared, of course, would go up this way and this way. But since it's got a negative, it's an upside down uh, even power. So it's going to go down like this. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to put the intercepts on the axis. And we know it, it it's going to come up this way. It's going to hit this uh, intercept. It's going to bounce. It's going to go down. Eventually, it has to come up again. Let me get this thing going and bounce again. So you know, let me do that again. It comes up, bounces, bounces off the axis, and goes this way. So we have a pretty good idea of how to graph this thing from the information we have. And there it is. There's the graph of the function. comes up like this, hits that x-intercept, but it doesn't go through. It bounces, comes up, bounces again. Where is it going to go? It can't go through the x-axis again. It has to eventually go like that. So there it is. Now, uh, if you want to graph this thing on your graphing calculator, here's a, you can stop the camera, the, the movie right here, and put this in. This is x-min, x-max, and x-scale, and y-min, y-max. And this will give you a good um, picture if you uh, plug this into your calculator in that way.